Hey everybody, it's Mike from Orderflows and welcome to this video on order flow Bitcoin analysis. You know, this is the first video that I've done on Bitcoin analysis with order flow um, that I've posted up on my YouTube channel. And, you know, it's a question that I've gotten over the years is, can order flow be used on Bitcoin or some of the other crypto markets? And yeah, yes, it, it can. You know, it's a market that trades in a basically in a two-way auction, right? There's buyers and there's sellers, but more importantly, you know, there's bidders and there's what do you want to call them? Uh, offerers, you know, people working offers. So you have a working bid, you have a working offer. So henceforth, you have a uh, two-way auction. And of course, order flow can be used. And really the benefit of using order flow in crypto is to see the big size that goes through, you know, as you know, as we know, right? Um, the people that can really move the market are the big whales, you know, and oftentimes, um, you know, you see these guys like Michael Saylor, you know, posting stuff on um Twitter, et cetera, um, you know, micro strategies, you know, buying X amount of Bitcoin or something. But by the time that hits the wires or hits Twitter, the trade often already happened, right? He's not going to say, oh, you know, Michael Saylor's not going to call and say, yeah, I'm buying Bitcoin. And then everyone's going to see that and come in and rush in and start buying it. But if you're watching the order flow, you know, you can see these big transactions go through sort of unnoticed because if you're looking at a simple bar chart, right? You're not going to see, um, you know, where the volume is taking place in the transactions, right? It's just not going to show up in there. You can't tell how much traded here, you know, at at the price of, um, you know, forty seven five hundred way back here. Right? You just can't. You're not looking at the volume, but on the footprint chart, you can see precisely the volume that traded now. I use NinjaTrader. NinjaTrader has access to the Coinbase feed. Okay, now Coinbase is not the biggest exchange in the world, but you know it's one of the biggest. And more importantly, you know the data feed is free and it's real time. Okay, so again, if you're a NinjaTrader user, just go to connections and you can go in and, and set it up right in here. Okay, simple. And again, it's it's free, real time data. And, you know, it's quite fascinating to watch the order flow this morning or around lunchtime. You know, we had this big drop we get down to about 46,600 when we were trading almost $1,000 higher just a little bit earlier. You know, this is a 15-minute chart. Um, a little bit earlier, maybe about an hour earlier, we we're trading 47,600. So we dropped about $1,000 and then rallied back up. And if you're looking at the order flow, you know, there's sometimes it's just very clear sign when you understand what's happening in the market okay because order flow is the only method out there that's going to show you the actual volume that's traded on the bid and the volume traded on the offer you know the, the thing with these exchanges like coinbase and kraken and all the all the exchanges right they have their trading front end which shows you the time and sales, right, of the trades going through. Well, you know, the problem is it just moves too fast, okay? I mean, wh what good is that for you as, as a trader, right? If you're watching, you know, the, the time and sales, well, so what? You know, everything is going through at, and especially in Bitcoin, you know, you can buy any amount of Bitcoin that you want. Really what you want to see, in my opinion, is the amount of Bitcoin, right? And that's what matters, right? You don't want to care that, you know, someone bought $15, $20, $100, you know, that's such a small part of a Bitcoin. But when you can see things like here, right, this was today around nine o'clock, you know, 8.45, nine o'clock time. Let me open this chart up a little bit bigger. Might be a little bit hard to see on this video, but there was 166 coins traded right here so what happened is the market went up got all the way up to you know 48 120 started coming down and there was buyers here i mean people actively putting bids in the market there was 166 that traded here 27 69 87 normally you'd see this type of size come in and you'd think it's supportive of the market right because that's what um you know 200 300 close to, you know, about 350 Bitcoin right in here between, you know, around the 47, 900 down to about, you know, the 47, 850 level, right? That's a lot of Bitcoin at that time period for any time during the day. 
So you would think that would be supportive and it couldn't hold up the market, right? Market even sold off a little bit lower from these levels from the 47,900, got down to, you know, 47,600, rallied back up. But on this rally back up here, right? So I know I had, what do we know? Okay, we know we've got some big buyers coming in around this 47,900 level. Okay, so now when we sold off from that, we didn't rally, right? It didn't hold up the market. Okay, so someone or someone or a group of people, whatever, came in and actively bid because this was an area that we were trading at for the last hour and a half prior to getting to this bar. Market sold off, it starts coming back up. Now we're not seeing really the big buying coming in here, right? Second time around, you know, you're imagining, right? people that were buying it here market drops okay maybe they bought some more at lower levels looking for this market to go up finally gets back up to that level gets through it but it's not doing it on much volume okay i mean you can see as it's trading up here it's you know half of a bitcoin is two bitcoin two bitcoin and it comes off right then the next bar opens up makes another run at it again small volumes you know a half of a bitcoin 0.4 of a bitcoin one bitcoin three 11 so now okay there's some offers but the, the, the big tell you know the big tell for people that watch order flow is this this 54 here this 52 here okay because when the market starts dropping right you imagine that aggressive sellers you know people coming in selling the bids right people hitting the bids moving the market lower okay which is obviously a sign of a market going down, right? That's how markets move is when the aggressive sellers come into the market. But what you have here, you got 54 Bitcoin traded here, right? You got another 52 here, right? And, you know, these are the ones that stand out. Obviously, you got 17, 12, 11. But those are smaller numbers, but 54 here, 52 here. So this is the area right around here, right? Earlier, they were buying it around the 47,900 down to about you know 47850 so about this $50 area here now they're coming in here later at you know the 47850 47880 area you can see 55 transacted on the offer 54 transacted so 100 right 100 came in here 100 sell it. I mean, you know, there's 100 bitcoin that sold on the offer so what that means is people came in and they offered it out they put it on the offer for the buyers to come in and buy it. I mean, I don't know if it was some of these people that bought it here, right? Thinking this market's gonna go higher. They took a, they took some heat as the market sold off and it came back up here. And now they're thinking, oh, this is it. Now we're gonna get paid. And then they didn't. And then as it starts coming down around the level that they bought it at, you know, they think, you know, they, you know, we had our run to go higher and it didn't happen. So now they start offering it out, right? So you're seeing sort of the opposite. You're seeing that, um, strong passive buying in here, right, to support the market that didn't work. The market came back up to around their break even level, tried to go a little bit higher, didn't. Now it's starting to fall back down. So now, you know, even though this this market here now, right, is starting to come off, this is they're taking their opportunity to get out, right? And they're offering out 55, 54. They're probably offering more, but that's what traded there is the 55 and the 54, right? And they are basically putting it out there so the buyers could come in, you know, the, the I hate to say dumb money, but, the, you know, the money, the, the people that are thinking this market's still going higher, they're just happy to buy it here. Oh, you know, hey, you know, buy the dip, right? We just went up to 48, you know, whatever, 48.50, and it's starting to come down. Now I can buy it about, you know, almost 100 bucks cheaper. So they're buying it, but you have those big sellers coming in here right? They're not pushing the market down. It's not in their interest to start hitting these bids. You know, the people that bought it here earlier, it's not in their interest to get out by hitting all these bids in here and move the market down. If they can start piecing it out, you know, just offer it out, offer it out, you know, maybe the iceberg, their order, um, whatever. They're happy to, to keep selling it out here and just scratch this trade because they know for whatever reason, right now, this market isn't going any higher right now, okay? Now it starts dropping, you know, they lower their offers down to, you know, the 800 area, okay? I mean, that, you know, you got some earlier buyers coming in here, 40, 25, 46, 30. Because they realize, you know, the people that bought here earlier are realized this move isn't, isn't manifesting, it's not happening, 
okay? So they're happy to get out now, you know, scratch the trade, take a tiny, tiny loss, and wait for the next opportunity to come along because if they don't get out here, all right, what happens? Market starts selling off more, and it gets down here to this 47, 6, you know, 630 area, and there's a big bid here that trades, 111 Bitcoin. That's big, all right? That should hold the market, and it doesn't. It just goes right through. It just sort of gets swept right through from 47, um, you know, 630 all the way down below 47, 600. It comes all the way down to around this, the 570 area, so about a $50 move. It just gets whacked right here. Then you got another big bid that sitting in the book here around the 540 area, just below 550, right? Another 100. So you got 111, 101. So it's 200 Bitcoin right in here that is not holding up the market. Okay, so what did you have? You had buying here earlier, right? That should have held up the market. It didn't. The market just sold right down through it, right? Sort of came back up. Now you're seeing the big sellers coming in here around that same level, right? Coming in on the offer. They're offering it out. They're keeping their proverbial foot on the neck of the market. 55, 54, another 52, right? Market drops down. Okay, well, that's fine. You know, I got a big bid here, 47, 630. Whoops, it traded all the way through it, down to the next big, big here at 47, 540. Traded right through that too. These are signs of a weak market. Okay, now it's not a sign of a weak market um, that you could go and buy and hold for three months, right? When you're trading order flow, you're trading the now, right? You're trading what's happening right now in the market. You're not buying and holding, right? That That's a different type of, of trading altogether. So you got this big sweep through the book, right? So you got 100 that just got hit, 100 that got hit here, and all this void, all this no counter trade in here, all these zeros, okay? Market sold off some more, got all the way down to 47, you know, 120, bounced back up to where? Where you had that aggressive selling, okay? And then it just stopped right there because why? Those aggressive sellers that were there, they're probably still sitting up here, right? When people, you know, when the big traders are out there selling, they, you know, they, they, people don't understand, you know, when, when big traders are, are active in the market, they're looking for size to trade against because they don't necessarily want to move the market. And, you know, if someone is in a position and, you know, they want to get out of 200 Bitcoin, they get out of it right in here. That's fine. They're happy rather than getting out of 200 Bitcoin and dropping it, you know, two, three hundred dollars. If they could just move it fifty dollars, that's a good, that's 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 an excellent trade for them. Then they probably still got some residual. Okay, fine. You know, I could, you know, their average price is somewhere up in here around forty-seven, five fifty. They could just work whatever left they got uh, right up here. So if the market comes back up, they start to sell it again, which they do, right? And then the market drops from 550 all the way down to 46, 650. And you know, probably triggered other sellers coming in here, right? Now the market did bounce back, okay? Obviously, um, bounced back pretty quick. And where are we right now? And right now, we're sort of around this five, you know, this area that you had the big aggressive selling going on. Um, well, now we're a bit lower here, trading around uh, 300. So it'll be interesting. I'm looking at this level here, this 47, 200, if it can hold or not, you know, because earlier you have this big blue zone, right, which is a sign of, of um, trap traders, which should hold as support. So, you know, I'd be interested to see if it comes down in here and can hold and then bounce back up or not. Right here, we got some aggressive sellers coming in. Obviously, you got this, all these imbalances. Um, so we'll see. You know, it's, again, it's um, it's an interesting market. It follows order flow really nice. But right now, there's not too much going on. Again, you know, what time is it? It's about 5 in the afternoon in Chicago, so it's kind of a quiet time before Asia kicks off. But, you know, we're seeing some pretty small deltas in the markets, you know, 12, 6, 8. So trading has kind of quieted down. But we'll see if this 47,200, you know, to the 47,100, if this area can hold in here as support, then, you know, I'd look for a 
move back up, maybe back up to these highs up here, 47,900, maybe a run at 47,800. If not, if this breaks, we can trade through here, obviously, um, the move would be to the downside. So anyway, guys, you know, I hope you found this interesting. It's, uh, you know, crypto is an interesting market. You know, maybe later I'll, I'll do one on, on Dogecoin because um, Dogecoin, in my opinion, follows order flow really nicely. I mean, you can see it right here, right? You got that big selling zone where the market sold off, came right back up into it and held and sold off some more. So anyway, guys, you know, if you found this interesting, put a thanks in the comment section. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And take care, everyone. Bye-bye.